Hello everyone, this is another real life AWS architecture overview video. And this time we're gonna be talking about a instance scheduler architecture. And this problem is a very common one, or at least the problem that this architecture attempts to solve, which is that when you're in the office, you only want certain pieces of infrastructure, especially if they're provisioned pieces of infrastructure that cost money by the hour, you only want them to be up and running at specific times of the day. Uh, more specifically, when you're in the office. So for a traditional job between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And so what this architecture attempts to solve is to turn on EC2 and RDS instances at a particular time, so 9 a.m. in a traditional case, and then turn them off at another period of time, which in this case could be 5 p.m. And this should also solve for multiple different AWS accounts, multiple different regions, multiple different schedules. So it should be very customizable in the sense that you can have many different pairings of EC2 instances and RDS databases, and you can have unique schedules for each one in different AWS accounts. So that's what this architecture is attempting to solve for. And for reference, this comes from the AWS Reference Architecture website. I'll give a link to this diagram down below uh, so you can read up about this on your own. Uh, but also just a call out, we're not going to go through every single detail about this architecture. I'm going to skip some things. So we're not going to talk about the SNS piece down here. Uh, we're not going to talk about the KMS or key management service for encryption either since it's not very interesting for the problem that we're trying to solve. But for the remainder of the things, we're going to talk about them all. But for the remainder of the items, we're going to talk about each of them. Okay, so before we get into the actual uh, architecture here, let's talk about the problem that this is trying to solve, right? Uh, so let's draw a very quick diagram. So I want to draw a timeline here. So this is a timeline. So let's say uh, looks like this and uh, right here is 9 a.m. which can be the beginning of our day but imagine that we have like you know all the hours of the day here all 24 hours uh, so then there's 10 11 12 uh, 1 2 3 4 5 p.m. and then you know maybe 6 and 7 down here uh, so here is 5 p.m. right and so the idea of this architecture is that we want to be able to say at a particular time, uh, 9 a.m. in the example that I'm going to show you now, uh, and 5 p.m., we want to turn on an EC2 instance if it's not already on. Uh, also turn on that RDS instance as well. And then when we hit 5 p.m., we want to automatically turn that off. So let's kind of draw that out. So at 9 a.m., we want to have like kind of a trigger that hits right here. And then at 5 p.m., we want to have another trigger that turns everything off. So you have on over here you have off over here and then off and then everything in between is kind of like um, kind of everything is running as normal and so this should be both for our ec2 and our rds instance and similarly we want this to work for different aws accounts different regions and we also want to have potentially a lot of different schedules right maybe we have different users so maybe for this particular schedule this is like an individual developer account right so maybe it's like dan dash dev or something right but there could be another user or potentially n number of user, users or infinite number of users. And maybe for them, we only want to have a schedule that kicks this off at, I guess this would be 3 p.m. And then it would go off at 5 p.m., right? So the window of availability would be kind of right here. And maybe this is for like a QA person or something like that. They're doing some testing at the end of the day. So we want this to be kind of customizable dynamics so that we can have many different users with many different schedules. So what does that initial configuration look like? Like what are the kind of concepts or the data models that we need to represent what we're trying to do here? Um, so let me draw that out for you down below. Let me get a different color here. Let's get like green. Okay. So um, the first thing that we need is some kind of identifier that describes like what is the name of this? thing right so what is the name of this what is the name of this so we're going to call that a tag so tag um, okay then what else do we need we need the schedule start time and the schedule end time so in this case for for dan dev it would be 9 a.m and 5 p.m uh, you can either put this in two separate fields or in the same field i'm just going to say uh schedule uh actually you know what let's just do start time and end time um and as I'm writing this down and thinking about it, uh, we may have a time zone problem here. This should be end time um, because actually, you know what? If we do this in UTC time, it's probably going to be fine. But 
uh, when someone tries to configure this, if they're not in UTC time, they're going to get really confused. Uh, so you probably need this to be some kind of ISO timestamp to show what the time zone is that this is scheduled for. Uh, but that's kind of a, a more complicated problem. We'll get to that later. Uh, then in addition to that, we need the region that the person wants to activate their EC2 instance in and their RDS database in and the account ID, account ID, account ID. So let's just throw down some examples of like what this might look like using this particular one for Dan Dev here. So uh, that's a separator here. So the tag would be Dan Dev, Dan dash Dev. Start time would be, okay, so like this would be an ISO time. So uh, I forget what the format looks like. It's like 2024 dash, I guess that's today's the February 17th dash um, 0900 and then there's like a, some kind of time uh, time zone offset thing here that kind of corresponds to um, how far away you are from like GMT. Anyways, I'm not going to get into that. And then this thing is pretty much the same for end time. And the only difference is that it would be um, what, I guess, 1700, right? With the same time zone. Uh, the region for this one is US East 1. East one, sorry, forgive my writing here. And the account ID is whatever, right? So one, two, three, four, five. So this is the data model that we want to have as kind of our, our configuration, right? And this is the data model that we want to also store in our DynamoDB table, which is kind of up here. And so I guess you can call this thing, um, like this object, uh, some kind of schedule object. So schedule for a user, uh, you can come up with an innovative name here. Um, but again, that's gonna be what is stored inside of DynamoDB up here. Uh, okay, so now we know what the data model looks like. We kind of understand what we're trying to do here. How does this actually work? And so it starts with, uh, well, there's some setup, obviously, that we've done in advance. We've kind of determined what we want our schedules to be. We've stored them in our DynamoDB table. So all of that is set up. Um, we've also have IAM down here in case you have cross account access. So if you have, you know, multiple different entries in your DynamoDB table and um, they're going to be across different accounts, you need to have a role here that's going to be able to talk to those different accounts that's going to say, you know, I'm going to launch an EC2 instance. I'm going to launch an RDS instance. Um, so you need um, like a read and write, read and write for all of the different account IDs that are in the table. So that's some initial setup that you would need to do here. But assuming you got all that figured out, um, we can kind of proceed. So uh, we're starting with Amazon CloudWatch here. And the reason that we're starting with CloudWatch is because they have a feature called CloudWatch Events. And CloudWatch events are extremely powerful. Uh, for those of you that know about uh, cron jobs on a just a Unix box or a Unix machine, uh, these allow you to set up schedules and schedules to fire at particular times of the day or at particular intervals. Now for us, we can use either of those solutions, right? We can say we wanna fire at a particular time or fire um, at a particular interval. And if we fire at a particular time, that means that kind of in this data model that we have down here, we would need to know like, what are the schedules that we, we uh, the start times for each of the entries in our Dynamo table. So we would know to fire an event at 9 a.m., fire an event at 5 p.m., fire another event at 3 p.m., and then maybe another event uh, for QA here. This isn't really scalable because the more events that you add um, or the more schedules that you add, the more events that you're going to need to fire. And it's going to be a lot of configuration that you're going to have to do. So uh, as a trade off for this, what you can instead do is kind of make a naive assumption, which is that I'm just going to fire an event at every single hour of the day. And keep in mind, this limits the granularity of our on and off schedule. So we can only start at round hours. So 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever it may be. This one support the minute level. And so if we make a decision here to say, I'm only going to support at the hour level of the day, uh, we can say in this kind of CloudWatch events thing over here, I'm going to fire an event at 9 a.m., at 10 a.m., at 11, at 12, at every hour of the day. Right. So that's exactly how this kind of setup works. Right. So it fires at every single hour and then it triggers this Lambda function over here. Now, what does this Lambda function do? Well, the first thing that it does is that it needs to read off this DynamoDB table. And this DynamoDB table contains all these schedule instances like we've defined over here. Probably gonna do some kind of scan operation. Or if you really wanna get clever, what you could probably do is have like a GSI on like start time and end time and then query on like 
all the records that have like, for example, if it's 9 a.m. right now and you set a GSI on like the start time somehow, or maybe you have a, a field that just has the start hour or end hour, then you can say query on everything that starts at 0900 if the current time is 9 a.m. Uh, so that's another way you can optimize this. A naive way is just scanning everything in your DynamoDB table, which if you have a small amount of records is fine. But if you get a really large number of instances that you want to turn off and turn on, um, then this can become a problem. So in that case, I would use this approach where you kind of set up that GSI on, on your DynamoDB table. If you don't know what GSIs are, they're indexes. You can look up on my channel. I'll put a video down below on uh, DynamoDB Global Secondary Indexes where you can learn about this concept. But essentially, it just allows you to query on other attributes that are not the primary key. Primary key. Uh, okay, so now this Lambda function kind of reads off this table, right? So in hand, it has all of these different schedules in its memory. Uh, what does it need to do now, right? So it's, it's 9 a.m. There's no instances according to this setup that we have here. There's no instances that are on right now. Uh, how does it make that determination that there's no instances on? Well, it needs to call the corresponding APIs in EC2 and in RDS. And so the name of the API that you would need to call for EC2 is describe instances. I'm actually going to get the different colors here. Um, let's get the orange. So describe uh, instances, describe dash instances, I think it is. You're going to have to check the exact um, name here if there's dashes or whatever. And then for RDS, it's uh, something very similar. So it's describe, describe RDS dash db. Well, I'm really sorry about this writing. Hopefully you can make out what I'm saying though. Describe RDS db instances, right? So when this initially fires, you're going to call these two different APIs, describe instances, describe RDS instances, and you're effectively going to get back an empty list, right? Because you haven't created any of these databases yet. None of them exist. And so that's a problem, right? We need to create the RDS database. We need to create the EC2 instance, but which ones do we create? Well, we need to look at all of the items that exist in our schedule down here, right? Uh, so it's nine o'clock right now, our schedule fired at 9 a.m. And so based on our records in our database, we need to have an instance up and running at 9 a.m., right? Because we have a start time here that's 0900 with a tag called Dan Dev, and it's in this account and this region. By the way, these this API call is going to have to happen on every uh, account ID and region combination that you have in your database, but that's kind of a, a future scaling problem. Anyways, uh, it returns an empty list for both of these things because no instances exist yet. And so for the first run, what you'll need to do is call create instance, right? You need to call uh, create instance for an EC2 here and for an RDS. Now, the key is that when you create them, you also tag them, like use the AWS tag um, for whatever you specify here. So when we create an instance for our EC2 for, for Dan Dev, we would tag it with Dan Dev. And for RDS, we would also tag this for Dan Dev. And so now we have two instances that are running. We have the EC2 instance and we have the RDS database instance. They're both tagged with Dan Dev and they're both now in running state. So we're done with the operation. Um, so now what happens at 10 o'clock, right? So now we're at the 10 o'clock window. Um, our CloudWatch event fires again. So we're over here. This hits our Lambda function. Okay, we query our DynamoDB table again. All right, we see this object over here. Okay, it's 10 o'clock. That's fine. We have an instance or we have an object in here. It's called Dan Dev. It's supposed to be active at 0900 and it ends at 1700, which means that it should be active right now, right? We have a business logic that says, based on this configuration, in this account ID, we have a candidate for something that should be up and running right now. So what do we do? We call the describe instances API again. We call the describe RDS DB instances API again. This time we get back a list, right? We get back a uh, EC2 instance here. So we get back our EC2 instance and then uh, let's put a comma here. And then we also get back our RDS instance. Right. So we're, we're basically calling for all, trying to get all of them all at once. And so now we get both of these two instances back uh, and we can examine what their tags are. And we can also examine what their state is and their state should be running at 10 a.m. Right. Because we at 9 a.m. we created them initially. And so um, because of the fact that they're running, uh, we don't need to do anything here because we're, we're basically, um, you know, it's a no op. We're at 10 a.m. The instances are already running. Uh, which is good. They should be running. So we're basically done. This keeps on repeating over and over again, every single hour that keeps on proceeding. We basically do the same operation 
over and over again. We look at all the data in the database. We say, okay, this thing should be up and running. We query the uh, EC2 API and the RDS API. We see the state of the two instances. And therefore we say, okay, they're up and running. We don't need to do anything. We don't need to do anything until the very end here at the off state, which is at 5 p.m. Now at this state, we pretty much do the same operation, except this time we say, okay, we're at the end time here for a particular instance um, of our RDS and EC2, which means that we need to terminate them, right? Or put them into off state. So we do the same thing again. We describe the instances for Dan Dev. We describe instances for Sorry, we describe the instances for EC2. We describe the instances for RDS. We see that we have Dan Dev that are both in running state, but this time we know that we, they, we need them to be in stopped state or terminated state. Therefore, we call another API to terminate the state so that we can disable these instances and return them to kind of off mode. And so this is how this whole architecture is set up. It's kind of an interesting one. Um, it's, it's a little bit complicated for such a seemingly trivial task, uh, but I hope you appreciated the nuance that goes into this. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I have a bunch of other ones for AWS architecture overviews on my channel. So feel free to check them out. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.